criticizing this this sort of rigid universal uh, understanding of what one size fits all ethical theories, right? One size fits all ethical claims uh, that don't take into specific examples. Yeah. I was going to say like there's no like big features. Like you have to focus in on like specific instances like of ethical situations, or else it's like useless. Right. So particular that, that that's you know precisely uh, what I was getting at. Particularists say that we need to be concerned with specific examples. Uh, and the, the language that we often use for referring to this type of theory is considered case judgments. Particularists are concerned about considered case judgments. Uh, what does that mean? Quite simply, particularists are concerned about our intuitions on specific cases. Right? What are our considered judgments about a specific case? So let me give you an example. Um, line. Right? Let's say it would, it would make my friend slightly happier uh, that I lied uh, about her stealing money from her parents. Okay? It wasn't a whole lot of money. Parents didn't lose, you know, they were well off. She stole maybe like 25 bucks from her mom, right? Is this the right thing to do? To keep that secret, right? To, to actively lie to someone, to an, another, to, an, to an adult, right, about theft. We might come to different intuitive conclusions, and maybe this uh, isn't the best example, but a lot of people would say, no, it's not the right thing to do. You, you need to alert the parents that you know, they have been stolen from and their child is, is a thief, right? Um, okay, different example. This one's been expounded about as many times as I could possibly imagine. Uh, lying to a Nazi, okay? Is it permissible to, uh, when a Nazi shows up to your door and asks where you're hiding people in your house, uh, to say, no, I'm not hiding anyone, and then uh, continue to you know, conduct an interview with this Nazi and, and attempt to convince him that you, you are not hiding the fugitives of the state? Right? Is that permissible? Probably. Right? It might not even be permissible. You might have an obligation to do it. Uh, we might say it's not just permissible. It's obligatory. Um, so the particularist is concerned with this. Right? The, t the particularist is concerned with these types of questions. Right? He says, there's no uh, hard, fast rule about truth. There's no, uh, as you put, capital T truth right? uh, when it comes to norms of claims that apply to, to, to all these different cases. Right? But there are certainly truths when they apply to specific cases. They, they exist in specific instances. And so in order to determine what is true, we have to look to just these, these cases. Right? There's a contrasting theory. Um, can I erase this? Does everyone have this stuff written down? Awesome. Yeah. There's a contrasting theory to particularism. Uh, okay, does anyone know what it is? It's kind of a funny name. It sounds, yeah. Is it Methodism? Yeah. Not like the uh, school of religious thought, rather it is uh, distinct, right? Methodism, what does Methodism say? Yeah. It attempts to derive like some kind of uh, universal truth based on like certain premises. Uh, that is correct. It attempts to derive moral truths based on, as you put, specific uh, principles or, or premises or general, as we call them, uh, general principles. So earlier, for example, when I asked uh, how do we know, how do we justify, or how do we know when, when a, a warrant has justified its claim, you said there might be some causal relationship. Uh, you said there might be, I mean, we can draw uh, premise, 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 conclusion from those premises. This is a Methodist interpretation of, of uh, moral belief, right, or a fact, rather. It says that there are general principles we can construct about things. We can construct general principles about mathematics that apply to any mathematical instance. We can construct general principles about ethics that apply to any ethical instance, right? What might some of these principles look like? Well, they could take a bunch of different forms. Uh, can anyone think of one, for example? What might be a particular belief? Or sorry, uh, um, a Methodist belief about some moral truth or some some claim that seems particularly general principle-ish. Yeah. Uh, torture is bad. Yeah, torture is wrong, right? 
Uh, any torture is wrong. You had another one? Um, like, could it appeal to certain, or not appeal, but could it be the foundation for certain meta ethics? Yes. Like, uh, yeah, uh, w this gets into something you're, uh, yes and no, you're a little ahead, which is good. Um, I'm glad we're thinking in this direction. This actually touches on something I'm going to mention in about two minutes. Um, meta ethics, they're also, we, we haven't considered those yet in these processes, how they fit in. We'll get to that. Um, so uh, another, another general principle might be something like everyone ought to be free, right? Or uh, governments ought not be oppressive. Or uh, there are natural laws and they prompt us to act in certain ways. Or even simply, uh, we must act to maximize well-being, right? These are general principles that are constructed by other general principles that we have reasons to believe in. Um, okay, so these are two ways of generating normal claims, right? Particularism and Methodism. Uh, and we can kind of use them to answer K's, right? Kind of. Uh, we might say about uh, a critique framework that if particularism were true, uh, the K doesn't, the K makes a generalist claim, right? Or a, a claim about general principles, like breaking down, uh, in general, breaking down systems of, a pre or, uh, systems of power structures that create oppression is important, or you know, challenging certain assumptions, uh, uh, rejecting people who use this type of discourse. These are all general principle type arguments, right? But the K might not consider the specific example of the app, the specific uh, problem that the app plan creates. And so, in actuality, the K is unable to prove that its warrants justify its, its total claim that we ought to reject the app, or that we ought to reject the app framework. Uh, because the app framework might be derived from a particular perspective uh, that considers whatever specific instance of the resolution to be most important. Does that make sense? Yeah. Wait, would something like act until be like particularist because looks at what specific acts would be Methodist because then you should look at the best act generally? Good question. I like this question. Anyone anyone want to take a stab? I would say act util still falls under Methodism because act util still has like these basic guidelines for that you should follow when you decide to take an action. While your actions may differ in like different circumstances, they're still following, or at least in theory, should still follow the same basic guidelines. Yeah, and I would agree. Uh, act, something like act util, utilitarian theory, right, typically tells you overall, in any particular case, this is what you always ought to be trying to do. You always ought to be trying to maximize utility, right? Um, we might take different interpretations of this. We might say we are rule consequentialists or rule utilitarians. And so uh, we ought to always, always act on rules or principles that, that increase utility. But it tells you in every single instance of, it, of all these different cases how you ought to be acting. Particularism does not believe we can make such a claim. OK. There is a way to resolve this. There is a theory that coheres these two things together. Okay? It believes that both of them are helpful in different cases. Has anyone heard of it before? No? Good. We call it reflective equilibrium. Okay, reflective equilibrium, and there are two kinds. Uh, people don't. People seem to forget this. There is what we call one, or I guess the A sub point is narrow. Uh, reflective equilibrium, narrow R E, as I'll summarize it. And then B sub point is Y. So to keep it really simple, narrow reflective equilibrium says that we can cohere these two problems. Right? We can cohere these two theories uh, into a, when we're considering if a, if a specific warrant justifies a specific claim. It's a coherence theory, uh, reflective equilibrium. Theory, okay? But we come across some interesting problems. And this is the problem that you brought up before, meta-ethics. Right? What do we do with these metaphysical concerns, with these meta-ethical beliefs that we have? What do we do about them? How, what, where does a meta-ethical belief fall in, in, this, in this category? Some might fall into a particularist uh, uh, filter. Right? Some like non-cognitivist theory, for example, might be concerned uh, with justifying supremacies based on specific intuition or specific uh, emotions that people have. This seems to uh, fall back on a particularist view. Others might be Methodist. So uh, the reflective equilibrium also doesn't do the narrow version of reflective equilibrium. Also has a hard time considering other problems like what is the nature of free will, right? Well, where do we fit that into this 
this process? What happens if our belief in this in one of these is perfectly split, right? If we're trying to cohere something, and uh, we have 50% credence, we grant 50% credence to the Methodist belief and 50% credence to the particularist belief. It's split 50-50. What do we do? How do we resolve these types of problems? We invented a solution. We call it wide and flexible equilibrium. And wide RE considers one extra input. We call them background periods. Okay, background periods. Background theories are pieces of information that seem important in moral considerations, but the, the solutions to them alone don't give us the solutions to a specific moral question. So, what is the nature of personal identity? Well, because I know what personal identity is, doesn't mean I know what is right and what is wrong, but it seems important when I go to consider what is right and what is wrong. Uh, what is the ontological status of a human? This is another type of background uh, question, right? Just because I know the conclusion does not necessarily mean I know what is right and what is wrong from an ethical perspective, but it seems important when considering uh, uh, ethical theories. Same with determinism, right? These are all types of background theories. So in this sense, reflective equilibrium basically says this. We have, uh, uh, we have case, considered case judgments or intuitions about cases, right? Then we have uh, general principles, which I'll just abbreviate as GP on here. And then we have background theories, which I'll abbreviate as BG. And reflective equilibrium says we need to find a theory, right, an ethical theory, that best coheres these three things together. So imagine I was representing ethical theories. One looked like this. One sits here. Theory one is there. Theory two. Uh, really coheres with our understanding, or really corresponds well with our understanding of background theories, but not so well with our general principles and not extremely well with intuition. So there, there's theory two. Theory three is really intuitive. It makes a lot of intuitive sense, but it doesn't hold up to our understandings of, of you know, some background theory, what it means to be a person, or what is the nature of free will. It also doesn't hold up with our general principles about what we understand, say, government obligations to be, or uh, the role of the government in people's lives to be, or anything like that. So, Theory three is not that great, but theory four, well, if we're examining these uh, four different theories, theory four kind of gets the best of both worlds. It corresponds well, the best possible with our background theories. It corresponds the best possible with our intuitions and the best possible with our general principles. It falls, it falls right in the middle of those things. And so reflective equilibrium would say we should act on what theory four says, right? Because it is able to cohere all these things together. So.